it's obviously the last game and you want a positive performance, particularly with not having done as well as you expected last week after the first 10 to 15 minutes. Um, the results of other games mean that you can actually finish with a seven-place differential. Um, and obviously Stoke will want to finish as high as they can, but so will Coventry. How do you see the game panning out? Yeah, I think Coventry are a good team. I think the way that they play, they play an exciting brand of football. They, they've got good young players. Uh, Callum O'Ware, I think, is a very good player in the place just off the front line for them. And we're a team that likes to get the ball forward quickly, but with quality as well. So uh, for us, we've got to be on our guard, when, particularly when we've got the ball. You know, they, they put players in positions where if, if we lose the ball, they can counter-attack quickly. So we've got to make sure we manage that. But again, there's opportunities for us to go and to go and hurt them in key areas as well. And the players are aware of that on the back of the work we've done this week. So, yeah, it, for us, we spoke to the players this morning. The manager spoke to them around where we could potentially finish. All we can do is get the three points. And and if results sort of go well for us, we, obviously we can finish higher up the table. And, you know, a top 10 finish would, you know, would be a progression on, on previous seasons, albeit not what we would have wanted. But, you know, that's what the challenge is in front of us. And we have to go and maximise that opportunity. Do you also see tomorrow's game as um, a last chance for certain players to state the claim for a new contract or maybe if they're a lone player to stay or have all your decisions really been made? Yeah, I think in terms of the players coming out of contract that, that Stoke City players, decisions have been made. Um, you'll see some uh, one or two youngsters as well tomorrow, which, which is always good for the club. Uh, and you're right, there's some loans in there as well who've still got everything to play for. So irrespective of whether they're going to stay at this club or not, you know, we expect the players to go out and perform uh, to their best ability because you never know who's watching. So, you know, the ones that may be leaving, the, the potential for them to, to suit us elsewhere to, to sort of get their eyes on them. And uh, the commitment to play for this football club is is one that is a huge opportunity for any player. And, and tomorrow, you know, could be the last chance for some of them uh, to play in front of our home supporters in, in such a brilliant stadium. So, you know, we expect the players to go out and, and perform tomorrow. We, we want to finish the season with as much positivity as possible, which will mean a good performance and a good result, which sends the supporters home, you know, have a little bit of a little bit of hope for coming into next season. There were a few niggles last week. What are the updates on injuries to people like Madja and Wilmot? Both have not trained this week, so yeah, we'd be surprised if, if they made the game tomorrow. Um, Pal's been back in and around it this week on the back of a of a decent cameo there last week at Middlesbrough. So other than that, we don't expect too many more changes. Is it? Um, are they long term, or are they just niggles that haven't gone away for Madge and Wilmot? Yeah, just that, just just little niggles, really. Wilmot's picked something up, and he's he's had an issue once or twice this season with sort of coming from his back, and it's a bit of a neural issue, and going down into his sort of hamstrings and his calf. So, just making sure we would manage that correctly. It's it's a risk that's not worth taking uh, in terms of what he could potentially do in terms of a calf strain and things like that. And Madge's just got a little bit of bruising on his on on a bone in his knee, so he'll be okay as well. He'll be disappointed because he'll. he'll... Obviously, wanted to impress and, and get some goals before his loan period was up. Yeah, I think so. I think he's he's shown in in, in spells. He's he's got real good potential, Josh. We know what he can bring to the team when he plays consistently. And, and you know, prior to coming to the club, he'd not played a great deal, so it's been very stop start for him this season. Um, the key thing for Josh now is, I think he's got a year left at Bordeaux anyway, so he's got to make sure that he, he gets himself fit over the summer, and, and and we'll see obviously where that leads to in terms of where he's playing next season. Well, already the fans are looking to people out and people in and potential signings. You've made one signing or you've confirmed there'll be a new signing at the beginning of July in Jaggy Elka. That I'm sure most fans will like. But what does he bring to the football club? Great personality. Um, obviously, we wouldn't have rewarded him with a new contract if he, if he wasn't able to perform on the pitch. So even at his age now approaching 40, I think he's, he's still able to do that, which is a key thing for us. But other than that, I think you hear it a lot, don't you, about senior players and what they bring. What does he bring? He brings, he brings fantastic enthusiasm every day. Trains and plays every day like it's his last, almost like a young kid, like just still got that love for the game, and and happy to share his his experiences. Like happy to just he's he's a great storyteller in terms of what he's experienced in his career, you know, at the very highest level. So, you know, we always talk about the youngsters learning from that, not just the youngsters. You know, for us as a staff, certainly for me personally, you're picking up on little bits, you know, managers that he worked for in the past, what's worked for him. Um, and the seniors around him as well are learning, that, you know, what it takes to play. I think probably going back five or ten years ago, I think if you're aiming to get to 30, certainly 35 years of age was 
probably the age that everybody aspired to try and get to, and then you sort of tailed off. And you know, Ryan Giggs proved that you can get you can get to that. Jags is, is another one that's proved that. So, you know, how does he do that? What is it every day that he does to make sure he's available to play? Probably in one of the toughest divisions in Europe physically. So, great, great, a great example of somebody that's uh, yeah, that's just maximised his career, and he's still. You know, to see someone that's still got that love for the game is, is I tell you, it's fascinating to see. Yeah. It wouldn't be bad if he could play for Stoke as long as Sir Stanley Matthews did. He packed in when he was 50. Um, but anyway, m- moving on. When you look at planning for the next season, which obviously is continuous now, we know that transfers and trying to get players in is a continuous thing. It doesn't just happen over the, the transfer window. How difficult is it when you look at people like Taylor Harwood Bellis and Philogene Bedace? How hard is it to plan if you want players like that back in? Because you're not going to get them till the end of the transfer window, are you? The parent clubs are going to wait and see. I think you just have to look at every player in, in isolation. I think, yeah, some clubs are going to want to do that. They're going to want, to, you know, they're going to have periods in the off-season when the internationals will be away. So they might want to keep the youngsters in for almost for training games and just, to, you know, to bulk up their squad. And then they'll make late decisions. Other clubs are, are happy for them to come out early and get a full pre-season with you. So... We have to look at that. You know, we, we have a list of targets and it's not just a case of if we don't get the top one, then, oh, no, what we're going to scratch our heads and what we're going to do next. There's obviously, you know, there's a list and, and you're spinning plates and trying to get deals done. And if that one falls at the last minute for whatever reason, then you're ready to keep the other plate spinning. You can do that one. So it's, to be honest, it's just, it's a period of a process that you go through over the season. Every club's in the same boat in terms of the players that they're looking to get. Everybody seems to be in the same boat in terms of positions they're trying to, Phil, and I think financially as well, there's, there's probably a lot of clubs that are, that are fishing in the same waters as well. So, you know, you've got to be, how do you get a player to want to come and play for Stoke City that might have options elsewhere? It's about selling selling this club, which is which is an easy sell in terms, of the, in terms of the size of the club and the, the fan base and the history and all that sort of stuff, the facilities. And then we've got to make sure as a coaching staff that we get across the message to the player that, you know, we're going to improve him and, and get him to that next level because that's what every player wants to get to. So a lot of work goes into that, of course, in terms of meetings, in terms of getting out and about and meeting people and, and stuff. So, you know, hopefully all that hard work will, will pay off. And, you know, it's not just the coaching staff, obviously, there's a recruitment team behind that. Yeah, hopefully come, come start next season, we'll have a, a squad in place that can can have a bash next year. At the end of the season, you, you probably have a period of uh, introspective, positive looking at what you've done um, for yourself and the players. If you if you had a blank sheet of paper now and and you wanted to put one thing down that you've learnt from this season, what would it be? Good question, Angela. Again. Um, Don't have Angela asking the questions. That's going to be the answer. I think um, I think touched on it before, and at risk of sort of becoming a little bit boring, I just think you know we've got good players at this football club. You look over, you take maybe the Fulham and the Bournemouth and, and one or two others out of that. There's there's quite a mix batch in terms of quality around the division and I just think if we can find that bit more consistency we'd be in a far better position I said before you can't just look at this season and see it as a failure because of where we finished in the league you look at the early parts of the season some of the goals we were scoring some of the some of the play some of the some of the performances and and we've obviously had times when it's not gone so well but again it's just managing it's not just managing a poor result into the next one three days later it's managing you know a poor 10 minutes within a game and overcoming that without conceding or um, or when you're drawing without going losing the game and, and all them things add up and they're all really fine margins so it's course and distance like it's the players it's going through that experience there's nothing like I mean people can tell you till you're blue in the face there's nothing like going through an experience to really like put your ears up and go I don't know what you mean by that and learn from it and that's what good players do like good players learn from them and they don't make the same mistakes again so that's the challenge for us next season. Is, is I think for me, is, is getting that bit right, and I don't think it'll be far off. Yeah, we've said with a few tweaks, you, you'll you'll be an excellent team. But it's confidence and self belief, and uh, dare I say, not settling for average. Well, you're never going to see that at this football club. Certainly, while we're here as a staff, you know that's something that's just that's a it's never going to happen in terms of driving the players, in terms of pushing them, in terms of trying to help them improve. Um, no, no, not on the agenda whatsoever. But it is a feature, as you say, of this league that, that it is inconsistent. There's been very few consistent teams. There's nothing really to suggest that that will change next season. So is, is it a matter of getting more self-belief in, into the younger players 
who've now will have had that extra year's experience, as you say. I think self, but when you're talking now psychology, which I find fascinating, but self-belief, where does that come from? It has to come in. You have to have that intrinsic motivation from within to want to turn up every day and want to improve. You want to, you know, on the back of a poor performance on a Saturday, you've got to want to come in on a Sunday morning, on a Monday and really analyse your own performance um, and reflect in a way that allows you to move forward and play well in the next game rather than it becoming a two, three game period where you, your form drops a little bit. Of course, we can help massively with, with that in terms of the environment, the culture that we set behind the scenes, um, in terms of the psychology that we use. Um, all them things we can help, we can help the players with and more important than anything is, 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 is giving them the support that they need at, at, in then key times where things are not possibly going so well. And by that, I mean the players on, on the pitch as well, around them. Uh, that's what you see with good teams. There might be one or two players who are, who are suffering a little bit in terms of decision making, or in terms of, you know, they might be getting a bit of a roasting from the from the winger or whatever it is. And it's it's at that time when you see the team come together and help the mate out and get through that that tight period. And then and then you grow and then you, you get some good touches of the ball again. I'm talking now as a young player, and you grow back into the game. And it doesn't become a a sixty minute. Um, average performance it becomes a 10 minute wobble and then you can be able to overcome that so yeah again we something we work heavily on in pre-season in terms of pushing the players you know they have to be out there feeling it it's great you know we can do it in the classroom we can speak about it on the clips you have to be out there feeling it feeling what that what's like uh psychologically and and then being able to overcome that so yeah we've got loads of great ideas on that in the pre-season and, and looking to to improve at the end of the last game, there's normally a lap of appreciation and um, I'm assuming that that will happen tomorrow. And I believe that the Player of the Year awards are going to take place at the end. Yeah, it, it, yeah absolutely. It's, it's the right thing to do. I think it saw a little bit of noise last week at Old Trafford around, around that with the players. It's the right thing to do because it's, it's a chance for the players and the football club to thank the supporters for everything they've done since the start of pre-season. It's... Um, it's a chance for us to, to thank them for the money that they've spent travelling up and down the country uh, for coming uh, supporting the team um, as I say particularly when it's not been you know the end of the season that we all wanted so yeah you're right we'll stay out on the pitch immediately following the whistle you know you, we don't need to be going up the tunnel and coming back out because I think you, at that point more supporters will maybe, maybe leave the stadium so we'll stay out on the pitch after the game uh, we'll thank the supporters which is right and proper and then yeah we'll do the, uh, the player of the year announcement <laughs>